Okay, so uh, Nate, before I ask you any uh, just focused competitive questions, did you by chance have the opportunity to be around any of the guys either before or after they wrestled today? Uh, no, I was around Max, or I mean, uh, Ryan last night for about five minutes, but that was it. What is the atmosphere just in the arena over the past two days? Not even regarding, obviously, the U.S. athletes, just, I mean, Kazakhstan has had some good performances, uh, some other guys from in and around that region. What has the venue been like? Oh, the venue's been incredible. I mean, the, the fans are, I mean, the, especially today, it was packed full uh especially for the semis and the finals but uh they love the wrestling here and there's you know obviously a lot of russian fans and um just a lot of fans that that love greco-roman and so it's been really nice they've been doing a great job with the uh you know with the whole tournament taking vegas out of the equation how do you compare this one to other worlds you've been to i mean istanbul was really awesome but I think there's a lot more fans. It's a brand new arena, hockey arena. Um, so th I just think it's it's really nice. It's really showcasing the athletes, just like, you know, because they're professional athletes. And I think the job that they're doing, they're able to showcase what amazing, uh, you know, Greco athletes we have going right now. When you look at how Max performed in the bronze medal match, do you attribute any of it to nerves? No, I don't think so. I mean, Max is a seasoned veteran. You know, he's wrestled at, uh, you know, University World Championships and juniors before. So I think for him, you know, he looked really uh, in the zone and composed, um, you know, and that's something he had talked about leading up to the World Championships, that he was ready and he just wanted to go out and have fun and stick to his game plan. And I think that's what he did. Um, you know, all of his matches, he got to his two-on-one. Um, you know, when he got on top, he got his gut wrenches. So I think for Max, uh, you know, I don't think the nerves got to him or anything like that. Uh, you know, I think everybody's extremely proud of Max for making his first senior world team and, and taking fifth in the world. And he's got a lot to build off, you know, leading into uh, moving up to 60 kilos and for 2020 now. So for you, it, w it was... For you, Max versus Azizli was just a matter of finding yourself on bottom parterre against the wrong kind of guy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, that guy's a, a world champ for a reason. Um, but, you know, it would have been awesome to see Max get on top and, and get a chance on top. But, unfortunately, it didn't go that way. But, no, I mean, you know, tough match for Max. Um, but, definitely, he's got to keep his head high and and he'll keep getting better. Ellis Coleman, his second match was, I think, one that a lot of U.S. fans probably would find frustrating. Uh, we've seen this before, a, a, a wrestler going for, you know, arm spin, arm throw consistently through the match. Now, the difference with uh, Dimitrov was that he was successful the first time around, but... There's also that strategy where it's like, hey, I'm just going to keep going for them. And, you know, I'm not really necessarily expecting to hit it. At the very least, it's a slip and I look active. Uh, that's not to take away from the guy's arm spin. It's just that in the second period, uh, second period fell apart. None of these are called, none of these, uh, Ellis Coleman cartwheeled over two or three uh, arm spins in the second period. They gave him nothing for them. They called them all slips. What was your vantage point inside the arena? Did you think those were right calls? Did you think those were slips? And also, I want to know what you thought about Ellis not getting a chance on top himself, uh, despite his activity level. Yeah, I mean, it was just a, such a strange match. Um, you know, I don't think we got to see uh, the true Ellis in that match because he's so dynamic, just like he showed against uh, you know, this morning against Kazakhstan because that guy was a really good wrestler. And, uh, you know, Spencer and Sean we were watching film last night and he game planned for that. But so, yeah, it was unfortunate. Um, you know, like you said, the the Bulgarian was uh, kept trying the, that arm spin. And I think that, you know, sometimes they don't call that a slip and sometimes they do. Um, but you know, he, he did a great job and a and couple Gary, of them were semi-tight arm. They, a couple of them were semi-tight arm, uh, attempts on the arm, 
which mm-hmm. I mean, even, that's my only quibble with not calling it a slip. You know what I mean? Like they weren't just I'm falling and then hitting the deck. I mean, he went to his knees, I believe, on at least two of them, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, and so that's why I, I'm surprised they didn't give two for it. Uh, you know, where we were sitting at, we were screaming for two, and we thought it was two, but um, but unfortunately it wasn't. So, you know, I, I think he controlled the match, uh, especially in the second period, so I was surprised that he didn't get a chance on top because they had been calling it pretty consistently. You know, if you didn't get your chance on top, you were going to get it in the second period. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the referees were thinking, but... Um, you know, Ellis is a seasoned veteran, and he's he's going to keep getting better. And, um, you know, the Cuban making the finals uh, definitely puts us in a better spot for Pan Ams. Okay, let's just run through the next two, and that is Tracy, D'Angelo mm. Hancock. Tracy. Uh, Tracy looked very tough against the, the, the Ukrainian and that was the kind of opponent that I think was represented. Like, that was a, a very good kind of opponent, I thought, for Tracy to have for his first match. Somebody who's going to, like, put up a fight now. Of course, the guy was burrowing his head and bleeding with his head and t- tries to take a cheap shot after the match. But, I mean, th- who cares? That's high nonsense. Second match, he's going against the former world champion, Numan V from France. Two to one. We're in the last minute of the match, just about. And... Disaster strikes. Uh, what did you see? What was your vantage point when Tracy gave up the throw and then just whatever, when the string ran out from there? Yeah, I mean, you could tell uh, when the period started in the second period, um, I, I knew that that guy was going to come out hard just from what you could see, um, you know, but he had like one little burst and then you saw him start to stop his pace and that's when Tracy got the push out and I'm thinking, you know, all we got to do is now just Tracy got to keep his foot on the gas pedal and keep going. And, um, you know, with one minute left, there was that quick little flurry and and Tracy got thrown. And that was so unfortunate because I think, you know, Tracy's had an extremely, extremely good year. He's won a lot of tournaments. He's placed at a lot of tournaments. And, you know, everybody was excited for him to, to you know, get on the podium and, and get a world medal. So that, that sucked. I mean, it took the the wind out of the sails. No, it was a gut punch. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was, it was a, a big one. And then uh, Joe Rao, <clears throat> Joe Rao was, that was a tough one as well. Joe goes, he has a, a one, nothing passive lead entering the second. And then, uh, here we go. Uh, got, 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 got. So Joe usually has very stout defense from bottom part there. I've watched it live on video on a stream, so I get to see, you know, pretty close up. Right. But you saw Joe almost step over on the that first one, and I think he almost float try almost tried to float it the the second one even after that, if I'm not mistaken. It was, you know, eight hours ago, so I'm kind of burnt. But uh nevertheless, uh without being critical, did you think that he should have just kind of played tr- conventional defense after the first step over didn't work? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like you said, Joe's got some really good parterre defense, so uh, I was surprised that he just didn't try to, you know, gut it out after he got turned the first time and tried to step over, um, just gut it out and give him some more time to get back on his feet and score points because, you know, Joe's Joe's good when he's back on his feet and the guy's wearing down, but uh, unfortunately he didn't get a chance to get back up and, and uh, you know, get his offense going again. Okay, well, Joy is Joy's Joy 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 comes in the morning, and here I have the draws printed out. Nice. Uh, just really quick, I just want to go through a couple of these with you. I'm not going to go yeah. through the entire bracket. Uh, Ildar, and I think this is very interesting because both Ildar and Dalton Roberts open up a world tournament with the same guy, and that is Kinsinger from Germany. Um. Uh, Former, I believe, junior runner-up, and I haven't looked that up in a while, but I've seen Kinzinger wrestle a good, I don't know, has to be a dozen times. I remember him at Thor Masters, even if I was in Zagreb. Uh, uh, that is the kind of opponent that you would look at on paper and think, you know it's going to be a tough match for Ildar, but also one that potentially could be tailor-made as well. Uh, 
you know Ildar very, uh, very closely. You've been around him. Do you think that this is something that where we talk about momentum, it, not all guys have mo- need momentum or, or, or even if it's real for some guys because each match is different. Mm-hmm. Ildar seems like he's the type of wrestler who needs that first match out of the way. Uh, what is your perception of Ildar's chances here, especially after getting a look at the bracket at 60? Yeah, I think he's got a great chance. Uh, it's kind of crazy. You know, three of our wrestlers are have opened up or are opening up with German, so almost like a dual match. But, um, yeah, I think Ildar's got a great chance against him. I mean, I hope he comes out and pushes the pace and gets on top where he's really, really good at. I think also being close to his home country, too, you know, there's a big sense of pride. and, and That's a variable. Yeah, it's a variable. It is, you know, is big because he's going to have family here and, um, I know he's ready to go talking with Spencer tonight. You know, he said Il- Ildar's ready. And, um, you know, he's also a seasoned veteran, too. So I think it's just, you know, one match at a time. But I, I like where he's at in the bracket because, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, yeah, I can't remember if it was him or Pat, but one of them has, would have possibly the Russian in the quarterfinals, the other one in the semifinals. So that would be um, Ildar. He would have Emelin in the quarterfinal. Yeah. So. You know, he's in a good spot. He's just got to get through, you know, each match uh, one at a time, and, and he'll do it. I, I think Ildar's ready. I was watching him at camp three weeks ago, and, uh, you know, his offense and on his feet and his parterre offense was, was on point. Pat Smith, right, as you said, Pat Smith opens up with Roland Schwartz. Roland Schwartz has come up a bit over the last year, maybe two seasons, if you want to say. But... If Pat Smith goes ahead and gets past this match, and I don't like to look ahead, I certainly don't like to look too far ahead with these. But other than uh, Lithuania, Galkinas, who we've seen from the Nordic Championships, uh, as well as Thor Masters, this looks like, a, I don't want to say a pathway, but a shot for Pat to go against Lorenz, which is, I think, a, a shot he's been wanting for for more than a minute here. Um mm-hmm. Did you get a look at the, do you look ahead that way? Do you look at Pat and Lorenz? Do you see that in your mind as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think Pat, you know, has a lot of momentum riding off or, or, you know, from the Pan Am games. Um, You know, he's improved a lot in the last year. I think mentally he's ready to go. I mean, he proved that at the final X, he proved that at the Pan Am games. And so I think he's in a really good spot. And, um, you know, just talking with him today, I think he's, He's ready to go, and he's going to get the job done. Um, you know, he's got a great gas tank. He doesn't lay off the gas pedal. Uh, you know, the Honda Civic's going to be ready to go tomorrow. I agree. I don't think these guys are going to be able to handle uh, Pat come the second period. I don't. Uh, you know, first period's more of an even playing field, I think, by minute into the second period, unless, you know, whatever they try to do with passivity. But uh, look at the bracket. When I printed it out, it cut it cut off for heavyweight. Um, I had already looked at the bracket before trying to print it out, and I mean, I'm aside from him, I think it's hilarious that Adam Kuhn in his first match at this world tournament gets Ling Zay Meng, who he had in his second match last year. Right. Uh, aside from that, if you notice, the one thing that is different is that they weren't making mistakes whenever they did this quote unquote randomized draw. They sure loaded up. Kuhn side of the bracket. Uh, I'm not going to even bother with Kayap, Romania. Uh, I, there, I, who else is in here? I mean, if I just for reference, I have to, I, I'm sure I have to write about this as well. Uh, I think Nystaustis from Lithuania is here, who I'm pretty high on. It, they're just, other than Lopez not uh, being tabbed by Cuba, which all indications pointed to the opposite, uh, this is not a surprise. So, you're Adam Kuhn, and this is, uh, you know, this is a kind of the, your your prove it, your hey, here we are kind of tournament, I think, especially given the thunderous, memorable run from last year. I, If you could put yourself in Kuhn's shoes for just a second, do you even bother to care about your side of the bracket at this point? No, I mean, if he, you know, he wants to be a world champ, you got to beat everybody to do it, so... I mean, and I think that's one thing he showed last year that, you know, I think there was a lot of doubters uh, for Adam Kuhn, and um, and he got the job done. So, 
uh, I think there's one thing I've learned over the last year is don't ever doubt Adam Kuhn. You know, he, he's been there, he's done it now, and he's back again, and he'll be ready. One last question, Nate, before I let you go, and that is your Kuhn, and you're against Kai Alp. You know how Kai Alp is built. You know that he's, I mean, he's more of a shorter squatter kind of guy. Uh, you know, he makes his money kind of just pushing and shoving more than anything else. Uh, what are you trying to do if you're Kuhn? I mean, are, you got to figure that he, Kuhn himself has been scouted. Do you try to do anything different, or are you just looking to wrap your arms around this guy? Yeah, I think just stick to the to his game plan or get your hand or you know, your arms wrapped around him and and do what Kuhn does best and that's tossing guys to their back and I think it's a good matchup for him because like you said that uh that the uh Turkey heavyweight likes to push a lot and uh you know that I think last year that was favorable towards Kuhn when guys were pushing and he was able to bulldoze them over and and get the fall so I think you know Kuhn's going to stick to his game plan. That's like the smartest guy uh, on the Greco team. If <laughs> yes, not, he is. You know, all three, uh, you know, two styles of men's freestyle and Greco, I think he's the brightest guy. So, you know. Oh, I know. I just, when you say smartest guy, I don't even think about wrestling. I just think about like all the space right. stuff and whatever, <laughs> whatever else. Yeah. So, all right, Nate. Well, listen, get some rest. We all appreciate right, it. I'll talk to you in the morning. Thanks for all you do. Okay, stop. See ya. Don't say that. Okay, bye. All right, bye.